In this lesson, we're going to take a look at configuring virtual storage area networks, or vSANs. These are very similar to VLANs in the Ethernet world. It's a way of consolidating multiple storage networks together. Today we're going to take a look at this topology. This is a MDS 9216 that's actually connected to a Nexus 5548. But in this case we're going to concentrate on the MDS 9216 and investigate how we're going to configure vSANs on that device. So in order to configure vSANs, the first thing we have to do is change to the configuration terminal mode which allows us to make changes to the device. We're then going to go into the vSAN database configuration mode. We're going to create a vSAN and then add a new port to that vSAN. And then we're going to exit out, which when you exit out it actually saves your changes. And then finally we're going to show the changes that we've made to the device. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've already connected to my device and I'm connecting over an IP connection to my Management Zero interface, so I'm using my out-of-band connection. The first thing I'm going to do is go into my Configurator Terminal prompt, and this is where I can start making changes to my device. So in order to change, uh, add, or remove a vSAN, I need to go into my vSAN database. Now this is where I can go to add or remove vSANs to my configuration. If I want to add a vSAN, I say, for instance, vSAN, oops, vSAN 100. I can then also give it a name, uh, and I could say this is my CCNA underscore fabric A. Now I've gone ahead and created that vSAN and I've given it a name, but my changes aren't saved yet. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a port to this vSAN. So I would say vSAN 100 um, interface fiber channel 1 slash 1. This will take the interface that is currently in vSAN 1 by default, which is the default vSAN for every port. It will take that interface out of vSAN 1 and it will put it in vSAN 100, making the default vSAN on that port vSAN 100. So I've made a number of changes. I have created a vSAN 100 and I've put that uh, a name on that vSAN, that CCNA Fabric A. Uh, I can now create a second vSAN if I wanted, say vSAN 200, and give it a name of CCNA, and this could be my Fabric B, for instance. Now I would normally do this on separate switches because I would want a uh, separate infrastructure for my Fabric A and my Fabric B, but just for the case in point, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So created my vSAN 200. I gave it a name of CCNA B. I'm going to now say vSAN 200 and put my interface of a fiber channel 1 slash 2 in that vSAN and change the default from, from vSAN 1 to vSAN 200. And now when I'm done with all my changes I can go ahead and exit out of my vSAN database. So I've now exited out of my vSAN database. If I want to see which ports are members of which vSAN I would go ahead and do a show vSAN membership and now I can see that I have the majority of my ports are still in vSAN 1 and have no configuration applied to them. I can see that I have my fiber channel 1 slash 1 in vSAN 100 and my fiber channel uh, 1 slash 2 in vSAN 200. So I'm all set with those interfaces. There's also another way to see information about the vSAN where I can actually say show vSAN 100. And when I show that vSAN, I can see that vSAN 100, the name is CCNA A, and it is active. And if I do show vSAN 200, I can see that the name for vSAN 200 is CCNA B, and it is also active. I can also see my vSAN configuration in my show 
running config. And I can see in my show running config that in my vSAN database I have a vSAN labeled vSAN 100 named CCNAA and vSAN 200 labeled uh, CCNAB. And if I keep scrolling down, I will also see that in vSAN 100 and 200, I have interfaces Fiber Channel 1 slash 1 and Fiber Channel 1 slash 2, respectively. Please note that the configurations that we've been doing apply only to the 9216. So if I have another switch in the environment that I would like to have be part of vSAN 100 and 200, I have to go to that individual switch and configure those vSANs. I also need to add those specific ports on that local switch into those vSANs. And if I am going to trunk two switches together or connect two switches via an, an expansion port or a link, say with vSAN 100, I need to make sure that vSAN 100 exists on both switches. So I'll have to repeat this process possibly several times. Also remember, it's important to save your configs. Please join me for the next lesson, Verifying vSANs.